23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. You say, I'm not full of dead men's bones. You are lie. All of you in here are killers. You're murderers. How many in here has never killed anybody? Let me see your hands. You've never killed anybody. Are you admitting you're killers? How many have never? Let me, let me see the hands. Everybody who has never killed anybody. Okay, you lying. I love you, but you still lying. Uh oh! Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. See, look up the word kill. How many have ever told somebody you can't be successful? How many have ever heard somebody say that? Tell people you can't be successful. What do they just do to that person? They just kill their drive to be successful. How many have ever heard someone speak evil of another person's character and didn't see it, just hearsay? What are they doing? They're killing their character. So that's why Yahweh gave us the law, thou shalt not kill. So you can kill more than in the physical. When you attack somebody, you say speak evil of someone's character, you're killing that person in the mind of somebody. Somebody was thinking good about them. So you open up your wicked mouth. <laughs> See, how many have ever seen girlfriends try to change a woman's feelings about her husband? Honey, I don't know how you stay with that man. Now, if it was me, see, child, see, Mary told me about the man last night. Guess where your husband was last night. <laughs> see, he may have told you he was with the fellas, but I know he was over at Jane's house. You know, over on 3rd Street. You know, I saw it car. See, I know his license tag. See, so I, I went around and looked at the tag myself. <laughs> Husband may have been at the store. He may have been innocent. Not all of them are innocent, but he may have been innocent. <laughs> How many have seen women do that? Try to make life miserable in somebody else's house. I mean, and love it too. I mean, they be getting down on folk and just love it. And all of a sudden, the wife lose some of her faith and trust and love. Now, what did this gossip monger do? Kill the woman's love. Just a killer. So how many ever met some killers? <laughs> yeah, see, all of us have met killers. So how many of us have ever killed some folk? Yeah. And if you don't raise your hand, you still did it. You ever gone up and you don't really know the person? You say something bad about somebody, speak evil about somebody. That's that's killing the character in the mind of somebody. You always say, "Thou shalt not do that." Even if you found somebody stumbling, you're supposed to go help your brother get up. See, but but some of us, we catch the brother falling, we kick him down, trip him up a little more. <laughs> Put some rocks and bricks and stuff in his way so he'll show fall and they'll push him. <laughs> Pretend we're trying to help him, right? And be pushing him down. Let, let, let me help you, brother. <laughs> See his shoestring untied and step on it.
How many have seen people like that? Killers. That brings us to Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Read. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Kill. So now you thou shalt not kill. Now you are to kill. Now this is a real rough scripture to deal with. This is a tough one. Especially when you get into some scriptures after a while which will tell you the Passover is Christ. Huh? What? So this is pretty difficult to deal with. Kill the Passover. Kill a bunch of animals? Is it to eat or just a ritual? Or This is really tough. Well, before all this took place, Moses had a job to do. He had to call for who? All the elders of Israel. And that's key right there. That's right there is a big key to be studied. What is Passover leading to? It is leading to the deliverance of Israel from Pharaoh out of Egypt. And before the children of Israel could be delivered, there had to be a call. Before Passover could take place, A call had to be made. And the call was not for all of Israel. I don't want to take nobody's, you know, uh, stuff they're going to be talking about over the next three or four nights, but I just have to deal with this. I already have this on the line. I just have to deal with this. See, a special call had to be made. And there was a special group in Israel that. Moses had to beckon. They had to be identified. They look like everybody else in Israel. But they are a little different from everybody else in Israel. Elder is a very significant term. Uh, look up elder for me. I know all of you know all of what that means, but you don't mind if I take a little bit of time to learn, do you? I want to try to find out a little bit about what an elder is. Because what Moses did to deliver Israel from Pharaoh out of Egypt, that's what I'm going to do. And I can guarantee you I'm in the process of calling the elders right now. And they're referred to in different parts of the scripture in different ways. Colloquially, <clears throat> I refer to them as Godhead. Colloquially. In an everyday term, I refer to them as Godhead. Scripturally, in Revelation, <clears throat> I refer to them as 144,000. But Israel is not going to be delivered till I do that. 
So recognizing that reality, I'm doing that. See, although all of Israel is going to be delivered, all of Israel can't deliver itself. Some have a special calling and a special ability. And they have special genes and chromosomes that cause them to recognize my call. And uh, when I call for my elders, or the 144,000, they recognize my call. And I'm able to call them from all across America mm -hmm. without my body being there. It's something within them that recognizes my word, my call. So when you show them my word, they say, yeah, this is what I've been looking for. <laughs> I've been looking for this right here. Oh yeah, they will respond. See, see, Moses just called. He said, I want all, I want all of this class. See, elders is a certain class of folk. Special class of people. Everybody just don't want to be elders. Some folk want to be and can't qualify. Just cannot qualify. And some folk just are this type. Let's take a look at elder for a minute. Just educate me, baby. Elder. Of greater age, older, of higher rank. Now, 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 now we got to it. See, most of us thought of elder, you're, you're supposed to respect your elder. And we think of what? Old folks. See, that's, no, see, you can't run around respecting old folks. Because it's a bunch of old fools on this planet in America. It's a bunch of old fools in America. Anybody ever seen some old fool? Some say, you've been a fool, he's been a fool all his life. You, that one was born a fool. He walked like a fool when he, was, when he first learned to walk. He didn't even walk like he had sense. So we're talking about rank. What kind of rank? Higher rank. Higher rank. So Moses called for a group of men in Israel whose mind had the capacity of a higher rank. That means they could be presented a proposition and they could come up with and distinguish supposition <laughs> within the proposition. Mm -hmm. And then distinguish all of that from the preposition. They know the difference between a preposition, proposition, and a supposition. And they know that wisdom is a defense. And see, most didn't just call for some old men. Some old folk can't walk, you have to go carry them around. <laughs> yeah, some old folk, they don't just have slow bodies, but everything about them slowed down. They go to the bathroom slow. <laughs> they have to stay in there a long time to try to finish whatever they do.
Sometimes old folk, they just wet all over themselves. I mean, they don't even have control of nothing no more. So see, that's not the kind of people that Moses called people out of control of themselves. He called men of a higher rank who had control. I went to the ghetto for seven straight years. And see, I just didn't find no higher rank in there. But they can't say I didn't come to them first. Now I'm calling for the elders. Brothers with superior mind. Higher rank. And the more superior mind the brother has, the better I like him, because that, that means he's better able to understand that my mind is all supreme. So he doesn't have any trouble submitting to a superior mind, because he knows there are distinctions in mind. Now, all of you can become gods. See, you all of you gods, but some are already predisposed toward the Godhead. They just already higher rank. They they love high class. Everything. High class means first class. I mean they you can put a bunch of cloth out here. And and, and my women that are high class will pick the best quality every time. Just by nature. It's just in her. That's right. And some women don't care about it. They just pick it by the color. Some women like the shiny stuff. Like some men that have no class, they wear polyester suits and that's shiny stuff, you know? You can't even name it what it is. It's, it's shine like the, uh, the moon or something. Be sparkling down the road. You ever seen men like that? Now, now, sisters, uh, what, 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 is that a high class man or a low class? See, you better listen, brother. Don't go by those suits. <laughs> you ever seen a man in one of those shiny suits? Doesn't he think he's sharp? You know right away, see, a high class woman, if he looked good, he's a handsome man, he, he looked like he got potential, she said, come here, baby. I, let mama take care of you. Let me, let me, let me, let me dress you. See, he have on a yellow sock and a white sock. <laughs> a patent leather shoe and a boot. You know what I mean? He have all that on at once. <laughs> no class at all. Be sharp with black suit on with white socks. You glad you have on a robe? What? Oh, but that's okay. Um, see, I don't have time now to deal with those that don't know how to dress. That's what women say that's high class. I don't have time to deal with a man like that. Give me a man that already knows something about colors and match. How many see men don't know how to match? So what you say about it? Man got no class. So what happens when women see men come in with a conservative wool suit, wool worsted suit, and the crease is soft and just right, and he has on a $200 pair of shoes, you know, lizards, uh, you can just smell Bali on it, you know. And everything is conservative and everything match, you know, you got his, his tie match and his shirt match, and then the socks match, all of that. Everything is in place, his fingernails are just right. And, and, and you look at him and he check out A plus or up and down. What you say? And here come this fellow with the shiny suit. You never met either one. 
Which one you want to be introduced to? <laughs> you can tell me you're not prejudiced. And what will you say about the sister that chooses the man in the shiny suit? <laughs> they deserve each other, don't they? <laughs> she probably has on a gunny sack dress. You don't want no flower sack dress. Polka dots all on it and everything. <laughs> Anybody ever seen a couple like that? It look weird, doesn't they? You know what kind of children they have, right? <laughs> they gonna, their children are going to have a difficult time in life. <laughs> See, Moses did not call the shiny suit men. I'm showing you. He called for men of the highest rank. Give me some more about these elders. Let me find out what kind of folk I'm supposed to call. Well, I'm coming out to ghetto now. Ghetto means ghetto mind. We all live in a ghetto physically. But, but if our mind is not ghetto, we'll turn the physical ghetto into a heaven. That's what I'm doing. I'm turning the physical ghetto into the kingdom of heaven. Because it's a mind thing. So when I say I'm coming out the ghetto, I'm not talking about our physical surroundings. Because see, I don't want to move out there. I'm going to turn, I get my thrill out of turning what we have into heaven. We can do what any other nation does. Am I proving that? All right, give me some more elder baby. How many glad you letting me learn this? Thank you so much. You are so kind. I love you. Teach me some more, baby, about elder. Tell me the kind of folk I got to call. Elder, one of the older and more influential men. Call. He called the influential men. Men of influence. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's what I'm doing. A man, a man that is not geared toward being influential does not respond to my call. That's right. See, when I hand an influential man, my pastor, he, he's the one that's going to respond. Because that's who I'm calling for. See, I designed my work in that way. So that he recognized he's being called out. Hmm. And a, a man of influence doesn't dress like a fool. He doesn't act like a fool. He doesn't walk like a fool. He doesn't live like a fool. Hmm? Boy, isn't this a lesson tonight? <laughs> Learning the type of men that Moses called. See, in order to be delivered, that's the kind of men I have to call. First class, high rank. Men of influence. But I had to get you ready as the foundation to receive these times. Because I told you I can't let a fool rule over intelligent folks. So my first job was to make you intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've given you the opportunity to be the most intelligent people on the planet. Yes. 
That's the nature of the wisdom I teach. And all of you know that, who study any of me at all, you that learn of me know I give you infinite superior wisdom. Now some people are content to come here and just be among us and never learn of me. But when you learn of me, you become like me. And I am first class, highest rank, uh, and I'm influential. And you the kind of men I'm looking for. And when, I, when Moses called them, he had a message for them. He didn't call them because he thought this up. Huh. See, Yahweh told Moses. Go to the elders. So I finally picked up on the message. After all these years, I have finally, I, it finally hit me that in order for you to be delivered, I must go to the elders of Israel. I can't expect Moses to do more of what I require than what I require of myself. I require of myself what I require of you. So I require Moses to go to the elders, the men of influence, the men of high rank, the men of first class mentality, the men of intelligence, the men of power, the men who can get things done. Hmm? And that's not just in one area of life, Men of influence in all areas of life. Men that can influence in all areas of life. Some, some of you are born to sing. Write songs of praise to Yahweh. And so then you sing about Yahweh. And you don't care who's listening, not listening. Because you know that Yahweh is going to make the world listen. And, and you want to get that wealth on the side that's been accumulated for the just. So all that money and all that contact that's been laid out through the wicked system, all that's getting ready to come over here. So I'm coming to men of first rank mentality who are influential with the talent I gave you to sing. And you're not going to misdirect that talent. You're going to utilize it to the glory of the one who gave it to you. And that's influential. See, this kind of man can sing about Yahweh and the masses who can't understand my message will understand the simplistic message of that that's written in the, in the lyrics of a song. And then they'll all be singing a one line or two, three lines that will be aiding them to wake up. For the sake of deliverance. So I'm calling for these kind of men to come on. Let's sing, right to sing about Yahweh. Cause nothing else is worth working. Well, anyway, I'm calling. And I want all of them too. I don't just want, I want all the elders of Israel. All the influential men. Some have influence that you don't recognize what the influence is. You have to study that too to understand. You don't really understand. Come on, baby. Elder, one of the older and more influential men of a tribe or community, often a chief. <laughs> See, of a community, of a people. Like, come on, because we're going to get down to them being chief and stuff. Come on, what would you say next, man? Often a chief or ruler. A chief or ruler. Moses 
Yahweh told Moses to call all the rulers of Israel, men who were capable of rulership, a man that can't rule his own spirit, couldn't help Moses. Huh? Because better is it that a man rule his own spirit than one that take a city. All right? So, the chief men, chief, foremost one, look up chief, shoot, I can't stand it. Because when we thought about chief, we thought about Indians. <laughs> Moses wasn't calling for Indians, he was calling for the chiefs of Israel. Give it to me. Chief, the head or leader of an organized body of... Oh, that child! Men who are heads and leaders of organized bodies and groups of people. See, we got to get down. The game of playing around is over. See, see, Moses was no chump. But then, it wasn't that Moses was smart either. Who told Moses what to do? Yahweh. So my coming means that's what I must do. And that's what I'm in the process of doing. Calling the, the chiefs, the, the rulers, of, the leaders of organized bodies of men. Come on, baby. Chief, the person highest in authority. The person highest in authority. So see, you got to take my songs and my package, and my appeal, and whatever to the chiefs. And then you give them what I write and design for them to have. They'll recognize I'm calling. Tell them Yahweh been Yahweh's calling for you. This man right here, he's calling for you. He said, come. He wants to see you. I think that's pretty good strategy on the part of God. Call for the chiefs. Come on, baby, chief. Chief, the head or ruler of a clan or the, tribe. The head or rulers of groups, clans, tribes, families, organizations. Whatever's organized. Anybody listening to me? Some of you been wondering what to do in your city. See, are you are, are you listening? Uh, are you beginning to do it? Are you having an impact? If you don't know you are, then that doesn't mean you're not. But see, you got to go consciously as my servant. To represent me, you must consciously go. And, and see, Moses didn't go and try to build himself up. When he went to the elders, he called the elders. He said, elders, I, I really didn't want to come to you and, and don't feel too qualified to be among you. I don't speak like you. I'm here because I'm obedient to the God of your forefathers, whose name is Yahweh. He sent me to you and told me to call you together and tell you what he said. And, and this is what Yahweh has told me to tell you. And Moses spoke, thus said the Lord Yahweh. 
throughout his speech to the elders of Israel, he said, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh told me to speak thusly to you. That's how they were delivered. And they saw the wisdom of Yahweh and responded. Hmm? So if you're here for even your first time, you hear the wisdom that I'm speaking to you. And if you have a job to carry my message to a chief, or an elder, now you'll know who you're going to. Mm -hmm. See, some of us are running around talking about water seeks its own level, and your level is way down, so you want to still bring me shrimp, oysters, crabs, pork, belly, pigs, dogs, snakes. Yeah, and I see, I, I mean, I told, I've shown you I have power over all of them. Right, some of you brought me scorpions. And they bit me. Yeah, they bit me. But I showed you they have no power to poison me, or hurt me, or kill me. I tread on them. And no harm came to me. But I'm telling you now, don't bring me no more. Crazy folk, I told you then, don't bring me no little hydrocephalics or neocephalics, I told you. <laughs> you look it up, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I told you in the beginning, please don't bring me hydrocephalics and neocephalics. Deflate the head first before you bring them to me, or build it up put something in it, but don't bring those fellas to me. I can't do it. I don't, they can't be used to build. That's not who Yahweh told Moses to call first. See, when, when he got through giving the message to the elders, all of Israel was delivered. Anybody hearing me tonight? This, this becomes one of the most important Passovers we've ever had. And I've only gotten the two verses. I knew I was going through this whole, but I got prepared. Boy, I had, I tell you. And this is tight work. So this is volumes of handwritten stuff. But I know I'm on target. I'm positive that I'm reaching enough of you to be effective. See, men whose minds are small and low rank cannot appreciate what I'm saying right now, but that's all right. See, I, I love you, and we're going to get you delivered anyway. Don't worry about it. Just be calm and be patient. But everybody, my helpers understand who you're supposed to go to now? Am I getting over? I've been trying to tell you the, the body snatches is a movie. <laughs> Don't snatch any more bodies and bring them here. I, I don't need bodies right now. I need elders. Now, see, I thought an elder was a fellow who went to church and walked around all day <laughs> See, you don't know what he's saying, right? I 
I did. I thought an elder was a church going fellow who was supposed to be holy and righteous and clean and moral and and kind of like a preacher and stuff. How many thought that? I'm not alone. Right. But that's not what Moses called. See, because the first thing you find out is when you go call preachers, that's the worst mistake you could ever make. <laughs> preachers dedicated to Pharaoh. Preachers is the one got you in the condition you're in. So you go running to them trying to start up anything. You can be in business trying to get in business and go running to a preacher's boy. You don't get nothing going. <laughs> Yeah, preachers talk and do everything but invest. <laughs> what? Preachers are born to keep you divided. If he can't get it for himself, he won't deal with it. He's not about deliverance. You better believe that. The only thing he believes in delivering is from your pocket to his. That's the only deliverance he believes in. But he's not my subject. I'm, my subject is... Who did Moses call? Therefore, who must be called now? No need of trying to bring a man into the light that can't see. That's a nice one. See, he got to be healed of his blind condition before you can bring him into the light. It's pretty rough bringing in uh, people that can't see and talking about they in the light. A man that can't see will never see me. <laughs> if you can't see me, you're not in the light. Man at least have to have the potential to see. So that when he brought in the light, he recognized what's happening in the room. Hmm? See, it's rough to be hoodwinked and don't know where to go and you got to depend on somebody to lead you around you don't know where you're going because <laughs> that's what happened to you in life see, it's so much it's so much symbol in that until see you got a lot of studying to do because when you get through studying all that you'll be understanding a lot about this word oh glory to Yahweh take me on honey Give me some more cheese. Educate me. You ought to mind me as you get it. We're we going to eat the bread. It, it's okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> you that's hungry, hold on. It's okay. Some of the rest of us eat another kind of food right now. Anybody appreciate the kind of food we eat right now? All right. I'm so happy. Praise Yahweh. Uh, we in chief right now, right? Okay, chief. Chief, boss or leader? What? what? Moses called the boss brother. That's the Bible.
I told you everything I do is in the Bible. That, that's just the explanation of what's in the Bible. The dictionary is the synonyms and explanations and definitions of elder. See, you didn't know an elder is a boss, brother. Now, you know whether you boss, if you're wearing a shiny suit, now you know that's not. <laughs> See, that's a sign, that, that's a symbol. When I use that term, I'm, I'm being symbolic, but you know whether you boss or not. Boss quality. But you have the opportunity to become Boss, a boss, I'm the boss. <laughs> you have a chance to become a boss. Now, see, this, this class tonight is striking home. This is rich beyond imagination. In all your studies, you didn't know it was like this. Now, this, this ought to make you get up and go. Because this is a direct command from Yahweh to Moses. I'm here now. Issuing a direct command. Go get me the boss. Trust me. Don't worry about the masses. They're coming. Remember, you get the 144,000 first. Then there's a multitude without number. After I get my name sealed in the forehead of the boss, brothers, then there's a number without that you can't number. It's ten thousands times ten thousands. That's over a hundred million right there. Don't worry about me getting those. I'm gonna, see, that's not a problem. It's that remnant. The remnant are the boss brothers. For real. Have you ever seen a some women just sit around on their porches and they sit there every evening, much of the day and every evening. They, they love to sit out on the porch when everybody's going home from work and they talk about everybody going by. <laughs> Don't even have dinner ready for their husband. They, they just sit out there talking about everybody going by. You ever seen women like that? And, and, and you know if a woman sit out there all day, she don't have nothing. And guess what? Don't want nothing? You ever seen people don't have anything, don't want nothing? It's folk like that. Those kind of people are not boss. People that don't have and don't want have a serious problem. Well, see, we'll give them direction. Moses gave all the Israel direction through the boss brothers. They had to be trained in management. Hmm? Because see, we don't know how to manage. We've never been schooled in management. Never been a man of age with the proper mind. That's what management is. Never been um, a man with a divine mind of age, the proper mentality. But to be successful, so you have to learn how to manage the many businesses in Judah. There's much business in Judah. 
People come to me and want the one, two, three of it without Yahweh. They want points and how to how to rule without and leave Yahweh out. Just leave Yahweh out. Heap it on up. Heap it on up. Because the justice is going to get it. <laughs> uh -huh. it's, it's, Yahweh is not a liar. You see that, don't you? Everything I taught you earlier coming back to play. Chief, I, I'm stymied now. I'm, I'm stunned. Moses called for the boss brothers. I can't get over this. I mean, can you imagine me coming up with stuff like this? <laughs> maybe it is a coincidence. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing all this accidentally. <laughs> oh, glory. Here's a repeat going on today in Pharaoh America. Oh, we're going to be delivered. Oh, how many, how many have a sense that we're going to be delivered? Yes, Yahweh. I'm after the boss. Boss, brother. I'm calling for boss bread. <laughs> Yahweh's looking for boss bread. <laughs> Going to bring about deliverance. <laughs> Balls, brothers. <huh. laughs> oh, yeah. Doesn't it just, see, it doesn't make it tingle inside? See, uh, it, it, it'll just inspire a boss brother to see that this is Bible. And you call upon for deliverance. See, the elders received the knowledge first that was required for deliverance. See, see the boss brothers, the elders received the knowledge of Yahweh first because they were capable of receiving it. And they were capable being influential men, being men with leadership quality, knowing how to manage men in the affairs of their lives. They were able to get over what Yahweh taught Moses to teach them. They were able to then break it down and disseminate it to the masses to where they just hook right on. And then whatever Yahweh wanted done, he speak to Moses, who speak to the elders, who speak to the boss brothers, who speak to the masses, and boom, we on our way. <laughs> See, now you who've been walk walking around with this brainwashed Christian stuff in your head about an elder, huh? you've been off base. Yeah, yeah. You've been off base. Huh? Boy, that makes you feel a little strange now. That, wow, elder is not what I thought. They told me I was an elder. And God. It's all inclusive of everything I'm teaching. Including every word that proceeds out the mouth of Yahweh. It's all inclusive. Israel can't live without the, every word that proceeds out the mouth of Yahweh. But see, only boss brothers can understand how to disseminate that. Break it. 
Break it on down. Break it on down. Put it in a vernacular and in a term and in a medium. In a medium. Where the, mess, where the masses get the message and he's compelled to get it and he don't know why he's taking it in but he's taking it in anyway. That's what when I call the elders and call my musicians in see, I, I work on your mind and then, then I cause you to take my message and break it down. Hmm? That's why you'll never run out of song as long as you tie it to me. And then with that, oh yes, I get it right to the right medium on all levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Compelled to hear my message from the top to the bottom. And there's a moving and a shaking going on. Moving and a shaking going on in Yahweh City. <laughs> oh yeah, Yahweh's the master strategist. <laughs> and I'm not satisfied for some of the boss. Oh, oh. Every one of the boss better. And the one that responds, hey, you just got to go, just, you got to go, you got to go. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, we got to go. <laughs> and we can have a lot of fun while we do this. Because, see, the fun is knowing in advance the results of our work. Praise Yahweh. You may not look like much in number sitting here, but see, you all that Yahweh needs. For this stage, this is, everything is precept upon precept. Line upon line. We gain a little here and a little there. Isaiah 27, 12, one by one. Your job is just to make sure you up and busy. Don't you worry about the results, you just be busy. Don't try to interpret it, just be busy. Follow my directions, I'm calling for the elders of our people throughout America. Give me some more cheese, baby, y'all ready? Ooh, I just, I don't know if I wanna go past this or not, boss. Okay, say that again. Chief. Chief, highest in rank or authority, most important. Wait a minute. Go for the men that are highest in authority among us. That's who I'm calling for. That's who I want you to take my message to. That's who I want you to tell they must come and see me. I'm waiting to meet them. I have a message for them from their creator. Go to them. I design all they need. Highest in authority. That means that I'm looking for the men who know how to execute authority without oppression. Hmm? I'm looking for men who know how to exercise authority or who I can teach how to exercise authority so that the people will rejoice instead of mourn. Praise God. I'm looking for men who know how to sit in a chair. Some men don't know how to sit. 
And I'm not going to go through all that, but they just don't. They just sit all slouchy and all over. And some people can't sit. They don't know how to sit. They have to have another chair in front of them to put the feet all up on it and in it. <laughs> all uncivilized, unref no refinement. It's all wild. I mean, you, you can't put people like that in charge of refined people. 